الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحدث الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي Dear respected shaykh ulama brothers children assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Islam is a very unique tradition So whenever we talk about Islam, we talk about Islam as a faith, as a religion. But we sometimes fail to understand this essential and important uniqueness that Islam gives and involves itself. And that is that Islam is a tradition. So the question arises, what do we mean by Islam being a tradition? A tradition, in essence, is a practice, a way a person lives their life. It requires them to behave in a certain way. It requires them to have certain priorities in their life. And it requires them to be conscious of various things that are absolutely essential and absolute principles to their life. So for this reason, when we look at Islam, reality is, it is a way of life. There is no question of whether you can be a part-time Muslim, somebody who lives Islam in one way and then takes up another tradition in another way because a tradition that you follow has to be one tradition that fulfills those very principles that you follow. Now, why am I talking about Islam being a tradition? Because when we look at our deen, we will see that our deen has been about primarily ilm, knowledge. And when we talk about the concept of knowledge, ilm, the question arises, are we referring to this in the same manner that we refer to the word knowledge? So when somebody says, I have knowledge, and it's used in what we call the urfi term, the kustrami term, people assume by that meaning, it means that they have factual information that they have and they can give to others. And this factual information can be beneficial. There's nafa in this or they may have no benefit in it whatsoever. Whatever the reason, a person's mindset will be such that it's therefore when we talk about ilm, then this is just referring to elements of knowledge. And that's about it. So you go to school, you gain knowledge. You go to university, you gain knowledge. You go to college, you gain knowledge. But no, when Islam talks about ilm, it's referring to something quite different. So, where do we begin? Let's begin from the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was inspired to play a very, very important role. He was inspired to play a very, very important role. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him specifically because of these very, very important attributes that he did. So the question arises, what was his mission? That was the mission of the Prophet Now, the Mufassirin, they talk about all the different components of this verse of the Quran. And this verse of the Quran could be understood in many different ways. But I want to pick on some very, very important elements of this verse, which relate very closely to the purpose of why we are here today. For the legacy of our Akkad. 
for the legacy of those ulama who have passed. They have left a tradition behind. They left a mindset behind. They've left a spiritual link behind. They've left children behind. Children who will harbor that same manner. Children who will harbor that same worldview. Children who will harbor that same message. Just the same way that the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was given his mission. So, yatlu alayhim ayatihi. Allah says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Holy Quran, recite the ayat to the people, to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. The question arises, ayat, are these the ayat of the Quran? Because you use the word of tilawa, yatlu alayhim ayati. So Mufassirun expand beyond that. And they say the ayat, that we make reference to here is the Quran, but yet it goes beyond that because there are certain ayat around us, there are many signs around us that are a testimony that there is only one deity, and that deity is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of everything, the master of everything. Our Rabb. So, on the basis of this then this is the first element of message. Another very, very important thing to take from this is why is it important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to recite the Quran to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Whereas later on, the concept of understanding the Quran and recognizing the important importance of the Quran comes later. And the message in that is just the recitation of the Quran. Just the recitation of the Quran, to hear the Quran, to articulate the Quran on your tongue, has a very, very important role about your spiritual development. That's why when you recite the Quran, you are rewarded. Because all these incentives of reward are for our benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completely independent of us. We are dependent on Allah. So every kind of act that we do as part of our rituals, of our worship, is solely for our own personal benefit. So on the basis of this, when you recite the Quran, then remember, if your heart is connected to your recitation, then your heart will be connected to the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when your heart is connected to the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then be sure that your heart will rejuvenate and will be something that will become a very important aspect of your future development. So the Quran's recitation plays a very important role. Then look, wa yuzakkihim. Allah says to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, purify. Them. So if you are reciting the Quran, so what's this element of purifying the people? How do you purify people? Do you wash them? Do you keep clean? Is this something that falls in the abwab of tahara? In the sense that it's about outwardly cleansing yourself? No. Yes, to some degree, but no. This is about cleaning your heart. This is about coming to such a state that your heart is cleansed from all those impurities, all those deities, all those idols that you have been worshipping, all those idols that you have succumbed to, idols of wealth, idols of children. Your children can be your idol. You may compromise your deen on the basis of this. So when there is reference to this in the concept of Tazkiyatul Nafs, this is about purifying yourself. Now the question arises, how do I purify myself? Do I purify myself, purify myself solely by reading the Quran? Do I purify myself by learning about my deen? And the response and the catalyst to this is, Be with the righteous people. 
Because when you are with the righteous people, then you will remain pure. And as soon as you refrain from them, as soon as you are, and to be in the company of the pious and the righteous is a gift from Allah. It's a gift from Allah. We're not capable of even getting ourselves to be in the company of these kind of people. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen. He has changed your environment. He has changed your mindset. That he gives you the opportunity to sit in front of his walis, the walis of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you can sit in their company and you can learn from them and you can gain from them. Now, I'm going back to this issue of tradition. So I mentioned the verse of the Quran. يَتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَرْفِي وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ So the message is to teach the kitab. There are many, many sciences, sciences that are derived from the Holy Quran. The ulama have worked over, over centuries. But then there's a final element to teach them the hikmah, the wisdom of Islam. And the Mufassirun explained that when we make reference to the hikmah here, this hikmah is the sunnah of the Prophet It is the sunnah of the Prophet What is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu <laughs> The Prophet sallallahu was the best of characters. His character was of perfection. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنٍ In the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will see the most perfect of characters. So Allah has brought to us the best of His creation. And that creation that we imitate, we follow. And remember when you follow the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in terms of his actions, in terms of his character, embodying his etiquettes, that what you're doing is you are reforming. This is our reformation. This is how we become that objective of what our deen has taught us to become. So let me give you a little incident. Just to demonstrate to you that the company, being in the company of people of this level of caliber, what kind of effect it can have on you. So let me raise the incidents of, for example, Hanzala, Hazrat Hanzala radiallahu anhu. Hanzala radiallahu anhu narrates a hadith where he says that I passed Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu asked, Kifa anta, ya Hanzala? How are you, Hanzala? And look at the response that Hanzala gave. Nafaka Hanzala. Nafaka Hanzala. Hanzala is a hypocrite. Hanzala has become a hypocrite. Now this is a close Sahabi of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Abu Bakr radiallahu said, Ma tukul, what are you saying? What do you mean by this? And then he explained. And listen to this very carefully. He explained, when I am with the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he mentions to us Jahannam and Jannah. It is as if we are seeing it there in front of us. When he talks to us about Jannah and Jahannam, it is like there it is in front of us. We become so engrossed. We become so fearful. We become so enhanced. But then, when we return home, when we go home and we go back to our wives, we go back to our children, we go back to our work, we forget this. We forget this. This is a sign of hypocrisy. This is a sign of hypocrisy. Hanzala has become a hypocrite. When Abu Bakr radiallahu Abu Bakr radiallahu was he, what kind of tarif can I give? He was so close to the Nabi of Allah. 
And his response wasn't, what are you talking about? But he turned to him and said, because he felt that also. These were symptoms that he clearly identified with. So he responded by saying, I am the same. I feel the same way. So both of them came to the Prophet and they explained this to the Nabi of Allah. And Hanzala explained to the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa that the Hanzala has become a hypocrite. The Prophet asked, Why are you saying this? Why are you saying such a thing? He explained, Ya Rasulullah, when we are in your company, when we sit at your feet and you talk to us about Jannah and Jahannam, we can see Jannah and Jahannam. We can see Jannah and Jahan. And when we return to our families, we forget. The Prophet responded. And look at the response he did. If you were to stay in my company, if you were to be in my company and remain in my company, and you were to remember my dhikr, then the angels would descend and they will massacre you. They would shake your hands even while you were on your beds or on the road. Because the company of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this wasn't about what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying. It was just to sit in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a very, very important aspect of our deen. Our tradition is that we sit in front of the pious. Our tradition is that we sit in their company. And today, inshallah, today, inshallah, that's exactly what we will be doing. We will be learning about Hazrat Musa Mutala Rahmatullah. May Allah place noon and barakah in his grave. And how his legacy was such that from his shayuk, this approach, this tradition, not only of ilm, but also of the tradition of etiquette, of mannerisms, of a worldview that has been carried down from generation to generation to him. And then he has embodied that to him through all his students. And inshallah today, we will hear from his students. And I want you to listen to it attentively. Because what you will be doing is, you will be hearing accounts of Hazrat. How his character changed the lives, changed the hearts of people. So just like Hazrat mentioned of the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa How they were impacted. How they felt so different when they were in his company. And when they were away from him. In a similar way. We will see that our Akabia, as they have left us, then the only thing we have is their memories to learn from. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to understand what's been said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inculcate this essence of the true tradition of our deen in our hearts so that we can truly see the world for what it really is. This dunya is nothing but deception. And if you want to truly know what the reality of this dunya is, then sit. Be there with the righteous. Thank you.